Okay, this this particular video is going to get real personal. So if you don't want to watch it, don't because I'm going to talk about sex. One of the questions I get or have gotten is what sort of responses are you now having? I mean, you're going through puberty, essentially, and how is this making your body feel, especially when we're talking about sex? I haven't had sex uh, yet. Or if I want to, I could use the old famous Woody Allen phrase, I love to masturbate a lot because I enjoy having sex with someone I love. Uh, <laughs> One of the bad things I left out of the last video is that your libido dies off almost completely. Um, you just bottom out. You pretty much for a while have no interest in sex. Now I've been here before because I have been on antidepressants and mood altering drugs and anti-anxiety drugs and that kills your libido just as quickly. In fact, there was a period there years and years ago where I went about a year and a half without even an orgasm. Uh, you know, I wasn't impotent. I just didn't feel like it. I didn't, you know, I had no interest. There was no, no sexual interest at all. And then when I first started transitioning I started getting just a little bit of dysmorphia that I didn't like my body. Uh, you know, you were, you were finally getting into that feeling of femininity um, because part ways, uh, a trans woman's brain works like a cis woman's brain. And the same thing with trans men and cis men. There are parts of our brain that act differently than if we were strictly cis males. So you get these different feelings and sensations that are getting jerked around by testosterone. And then once you start getting on estrogen, you begin feeling different. You begin feeling like you have more confidence in who you are. But the problem is you're also going through puberty. And part of the stuff that happens with puberty is you hate your body because it's changing. And particularly in a case like me, um, I have a rather large body. I'm not, people would say I'm obese. I am over 200 pounds and I'm kind of stocky. I'm never going to have a, a thin female body, but I don't care because there are a lot of plus size women out there and I'm just another one of them. And I'm happy with who I am now. So, you know, haters can go keep hating. I don't care. You know, love me for who I am. But uh, the libido has been down and I've been uncomfortable with myself, uh, especially having to come to grips with female sexuality and male genitalia until it begins changing like it's doing now. My libido has not come up, but I have had a couple of instances, three to be exact, where, now that I'm in the transition, I have self-pleasured myself, or as we would like to say, I've masturbated, and it is a completely different experience. My physical sensations are all different. They're all changing. And, for example, the first time I did this, um, I woke up out of a sound sleep. I was actually kind of have semi dreaming about someone that I know. Um, she's sort of my, uh, my, I don't want to say one and only, but she's rather close to me. So um, sometimes when she pops in, I get a little, a little excited. And she did, and she popped in, and I got a little excited. And I thought, okay, let me, let me try this. And it was hor horrible. <laughs> it hurt. It actually hurt. 
And I tend to be the sort of person who overanalyzes everything. So after I was done, and I had a day or two to think about it, I realized something. I was doing things the old way. I was masturbating the way I would have back when I was had testosterone flowing through my body and not estrogen and everything mm, kind of semi worked the way it did. Mm -mm. Not anymore. <laughs> you can't do that. And part of it is the, your penis is essentially becoming a rather large and sensitive clitoris. It's not quite the same thing. It'll never have all the 8,000 nerve endings in the, the bud and the glands that cis women have. But it's becoming a lot more sensitive. And I talked to a friend and explained to her what happened. And she said, yeah, it sounded like you were going at it way too fast. And that happens with her. She said, you know, if I try to finish myself off too quickly, it actually begins hurting because you're overstimulating yourself. So I had another experience later on where I had uh, the third time. I did kind of the same thing, but I took it different. I took it slower. I actually did stuff similar to what a woman would do when she's touching herself, uh, a lot of which involve feeling my breast, which when I do that, you get a lot of stimulation now. Um, my breasts are really a nice erogenous zone. I like that. And it was a nice orgasm. It wasn't as good as number two, which I'll get to here in a moment. And one of the things I've, I now notice is there's almost no ejacula. Um, I still do that, and that's kind of hard to get rid of. It actually will decrease. I, I've heard of other trans women who still have their testes, who haven't had the operation uh, to have them removed, say that they have gotten to the point where there's like nothing comes out. You don't produce any seminal fluids whatsoever. So you just orgasm. And, uh, you know, when they, they do this, they're pretty much doing it the way touching themselves in a way a woman would touch themselves. But my number two orgasm, number two, it's my best, uh, and actually happened in the shower. And I was thinking about um, my special someone again, someone I like a lot. And I started having this feeling developing in the pit of my stomach and it began working up and I was also getting a lot of sensation in my breast. It wasn't centering in my genitals, it was actually in my body. And it just began working up and up and up. And as the orgasm started to come on, that was when all of a sudden I felt all the pressure beginning to build in my groin. I had my orgasm, there again, very little ejacula, almost none whatsoever. But I had this feeling just blow right up through my body and into my head and I got lightheaded and I had to lean against the, the wall and I was basically panting afterwards. And after the shower was done, I still felt this lingering, let's call it what it is, an afterglow that stayed with me for about 40 minutes. And at that point, I was feeling so good. I was like, oh, I gotta lay down. I feel great. And I laid down and I actually fell asleep for about 30 minutes. And I asked a bunch of my female friends, not the trans female, but the cis female friends. I says, look, I, I have to ask you this question. And I described everything that happened. And they know I'm a writer. So a lot of them say, oh yeah, you got this great for your story and stuff like that. And I finally said, look, I'm gonna come clean. This actually happened to me. This happened in the uh, shower. And they were, they're a great bunch of women and they were like, congratulations, Cassie. You just had the first full body O. <laughs> you had your, you know, your lady O. And, uh, you know, I made it into the club. And as my 
uh, hormone doctor says all of your sensations because of estrogen will be as she calls it estrogenal now you're actually going to have female responses to sexual stimuli you know everything that you did before forget about it it's not going to work if you try to get yourself off the way you used to you will fail you not only will fail it will hurt and so you have to learn this whole new set of responses for sex because your body doesn't work the same way it used to. It's all different. It's all female. And you know what? It's really a great thing. I love it. I love how it feels. Now if I can get my libido up, then I could try this with <laughs> someone I like a lot. We'll see. Maybe one day.